Okay, so um, I think most of us are here. Um, so now um, we will start the presentation. Here is the um, foresight webinar. Welcome everyone to join. And um, today's presenter, my name is Wendy. And our topic today is the case study on imported food labeling in China. Before I get into the details, I want to have a talk about why labeling is so important for imported foods. Actually, according to the food safety law of the PRC, which stands for the People's Republic of China, and in this article 148, it says, if someone produced foods that could not meet the food safety standards, or distribute foods that are known to be non-compliant to food safety standards. The consumers who bought the foods are able to ask for a compensation not more than 10 times of the price or three times of the loss. If the compensation is less than 1,000 RMB, then compensate 1,000 RMB. This law is making a new career appear in China, which um, is called professional extortioner for fraud fighting. The professional extortioner for fraud fighting, they will usually hang around in markets, supermarkets, stores in China, and look for foods that are not compliant. And um, if they find out not compliant food products, they will buy tens or hundreds of these products and then ask the brand or ask the representative in China to um, compensate them 10 times of the price. As a result, um, it is really important to make sure that your imported food labels are compliant. For professional extortioner for fraud fighting, um, there are um, actually two ways they do fraud fighting. The one is they look for labeling frauds, and the other is they look for um, other frauds, food frauds in um, their nutrition content or claims. But this kind of um, this kind of frauds, they need to do a testing and they will have a cost. But for labeling frauds, they do not require testing, and which means um, the cost for them is really low. And for imported foods, they usually have a higher price and usually the representative for imported foods or the brands they are usually not that familiar with the regulatory requirements in China, and it will become the target of this professional extortion for fraud fighting. This is the reason why the um, imported food labeling is so important. Okay, so let's have an introduction of about the contents that we are going to share today. The first part, I will introduce a regulatory framework. And then the second part um, is about the regulatory requirements. And the third part, we will do some case study and answer some frequently asked questions. Okay, so let's start from the first part, which is the regulatory framework. The laws and regulations about um, the labeling, it forms a system that looks like a pyramid. So I actually call it a pyramidal system for laws and regulations. From the top layer to the bottom layer, there are laws, regulations, rules, and normative documents. The top layer laws includes the food safety law that I mentioned, and um, also advertising laws, which is usually related to the claims on the product, and product quality law, agricultural product quality and safety law. And then the second layer regu regulations, 
It includes administrative regulations and local regulations. The administrative regulations includes the administrative regulation for food safety law, which is a detailed regulation, a detailed process of how to fulfill the food safety law. And some local regulations like Shanghai food safety regulation, Gondor province food safety regulations, but these regulations usually only relates to the barcode control of the product. It usually does not affect your um, label, um, the other points of your label. And then the next layer is the rules. Rules include the department rules, like the provisions on the administration of food labeling, of packaging and labeling of agricultural product, of edible ag agricultural product quality and safety. And in the last layer is the normative documents. It includes notices, decisions, measures, and replies. Besides laws and regulations, there is an important part of food labeling regulations, which is the food safety stand standards. Um, all the imported food products will need a Chinese food safety standard to be imported into China. Why? Because according to the Chinese food safety law article 92 to 93, the imported foods have to correspond with a Chinese food safety standard or having a product standard that it used internationally or in its original country to National Health Commission in China to review. However, during these decades for about 30 years, there are only two products that have been revealed and approved to import into China without a food safety standard by revealed by NHC. As a result, it is not suggested to import food without a Chinese national food safety standard. Okay, then um, let's introduce about the regulatory framework for standards. Actually, besides national standards and industrial standards that I mentioned here, there are also local standards, group standards, and company standards. However, for imported products, most of them need to use the national standards and really little products could use an industrial standard to import into China. A national standards usually um, always starts with GEP and industrial standards will start with abbreviation of the industry, for example, WS, HJ, stuff like that. And if it does not have a slash T after this standard name, it is a compulsory standards. And if it has a slash T like GB slash T, WS slash T, then it is a voluntary standards. However, if you import your products and choose a voluntary standard as your product standard, it will become compulsory. Okay, so for normal consumer prepared food, which means foods that are packed and directly selling to consumers, generally they need to follow two national standards. The first one is GB7718, which is the general rules for the labeling of prepared foods. And the other is GB28050, which is the general rules for nutrition labeling of packed foods. These two standard, national standards are um, uh, their general standards. And besides these general standards, there's also standards for your own product. For example, if your product is a beverage 
and it um, is using GB7101, the National Food Safety Standard for Beverages as your product standard. And if this standard is having any requirement about your food label, you also need to follow. So um, for normal consumer prepared, prepared foods, you need to follow the national standards and your own product standards. And for other special types of food, like special foods, including infant formulas, health food, or usually called dietary supplements, or food for special medical dietary uses, or other foods for special dietary uses, this kind of products will have um, another series of uh, national standards, which is called GB13432, as their standard for um, labels. And also for unpacked foods, for prepared food, but not for consumer, which means your product may be sell to restaurants or maybe sell to canteens. And um, also food transportation packagings like boxes, this kind of um, labelings and are having different requirements other than the normal consumer prepared foods. Okay, so let's come to the second part, which is the regulatory requirements. For imported food products, there are nine compulsory elements. I made the checklist here. These nine compulsory elements are product name, ingredient list, net weight, nutrition label, contact information of business, country of origin, date markings, storage condition, and a new requirement, which is the OSS producer registration number, which we also call it GACC registr registration number or GACC number. This is a new requirement that come into force start from January the 1st, 2022, from um, the GACC decree 248 and 249. After January the 1st, 2022, all the imported food products will need to have this GACC registration number on this package. And since um, today's time is limited, I will just um, talk about um, the basics about this requirements, if you want to check the detailed requirements, I have listed the regulatory reference in my PowerPoint, and you could check the detailed regulations, detailed standards for all the elements that I mentioned. Let's come to the product name, which is specified in GB7718 section 4.1.2. The product name should be placed in a prominent place. And this prominent place is usually considered as the principal display panel. And the product name should reflect the real nature of the food. The real nature is a little bit hard to understand here. So I made an example here. So if your product is called a deep hydrolyzed protein lactose-free formula powder, it's hard to differentiate whether your product is an uh, infant formula, is a milk powder, or is a food for special dietary uses, right? So um, for this kind of product, their name could not reflect the real nature of food. You will also need to add a name under it to reflect the real nature. For this product, it is actually a protein solid beverage. So um, for this product, you will need to put your original name on the um, top and then put this protein solid beverage on this button to reflect its real nature. And then the ingredient list. The ingredients should be listed in a descending order, except those um, is having less than 2%. And food additives can be labeled using an INS code. 
uh, INS code is a code that is specified in a uh, Chinese food safety standard, which is having a number as GB2760. This is a standard for the food additives. And I also have an example here. So if a product is having an ingredient called starch acetate, um, if you look into 2760, it is a thickener, and this INS code is 1420. So if you want to write this ingredient in your ingredient list, you could write starch acetate, and you could also write thickener 1420 on your ingredient list. Ingredients should use um, their standard names. And if it's uh, applicable, for example, as I mentioned, uh, for food additives, the names in this GB2760 or um, GB14880, which is a standard for vitamins, added vitamins and minerals. And some of the ingredients might have a standard name in some normative documents. You could backtrack their normative documents that is related to them and use a standard name. Also, if an ingredient is emphasized in your label, its content should be included into your ingredient list. Um, I also have an example here. Um, for this product is an old coarse green biscuit. And in the front panel of this package, it says added odd. So it is emphasized in this package that odd is an important ingredient. So in the ingredient list, the, cont the content, the percentage of odd needs to be write out to make consumers know that how much of it is added in this product. Then we comes to the net weight. Net weight will have a minimum height requirement, which we could refer to the table on the right. And net weight should be presenting a principal display panel with our product name. Then we could come to the date markings. The date, for the date markings, the format should be a production date plus the shelf life. For example, a production date, um, 2023, June the 20th, and shelf life for two years. The production date should be in the order of year, month, and date. If it is in a different order, then you need to clarify on your label. For example, my production day it is starting um, is having an order of month, day, year, day, month, year. You need to clarify on the label. And also there is a strict requirement of date marking, which is that production date must not be relabeled, be reprinted or be tempered. So if you have printed your production day wrong, then it becomes a big problem. And um, you cannot um, change the, your label um, to change the production day, the, the mistake by your production day. So always be careful about printing your production date on a product. Then it comes to the storage condition and the contact information of business. For storage condition, unlike um, most of the countries in the world, a storage condition is a compulsory information for foods in China. And for contact information, the contact information of business should be the information of an importer, a distributor or a representative in China, not your manufacturer with this. And um, you could also write the contact information of your manufacturer 
but it's voluntary. Their contact information should include the name of your business, the address, also the contact way. For example, a phone number, fax, some internet ways like um, your email address, your company website, um, stuff like this, uh, or a postal address. And then the country of origin. The country of origin in China means the place where the food product turns into its final form, including packaging and filling process. So for example, if your products, um, you're making candies, your candies are manufactured in German and you transport them to Australia, and then um, you do a packaging in Australia and then import into China, then Australia is the country of origin. Take, take, um, take um, into care that packaging and filling process is um, also considered as the process for final form. As a result, if your products are manufactured overseas, but packaged in China, that is not considered as an imported food, is considered as a domestic food then. Okay, so let's come to the nutrition label, which includes their, um, their most details. For nutrition label, there are one plus four compulsory items. One means energy, and four stands for protein, fat, carbohydrate, and sodium. If there are other items in the nutrition label other than these five items, then these five compulsory items should be more prominent than others. More prominent means you can let them be bolded, like, um, the nutrition panel that I put in the right, or having a bigger font size, just make them more prominent. And for optional labeling items, these um, items will be listed in GB28050 in table one. This kind of um, ingredients, um, this kind of items could be also listed in a nutrition label. And um, if a nutrition claim is made on a product, this nutrition should be included in a nutrition label. For example, if I have a sugar-free claim on my product, then my nutrition label needs to have the sugar content. And then the last part is the overseas producer registration number, which is the JCC number. Um, the overseas food, food producers will need to get a registration number before they could import food products into China. And this number should be printed on the food labels. Um, for example, this is an oil product and its overseas producer registration number is printed on its label under the storage, con storage condition information. And um, this number is usually have 18 digits. Besides the compulsory elements, there also might be other related requirements. So as I mentioned about the laws, regulations, and the standards, um, it is recommended to check all the requirements from each laws and regulations layers and um, all kinds of standards that applies to a product to make sure that all the other related requirements are fulfilled. And um, we food made is the biggest platform for this food laws, regulations, and standard searching, you're welcome to get into our website to search for the, uh, the related requirements to your products.
Okay, the third part, um, we will do a case study and um, do some free, answer some frequently asked questions. The first one, um, and this is the most frequently asked questions, is that um, whether label stickers are acceptable in China um, for products like infant formulas, health food, foods for special medical dietary uses, and other foods for special dietary uses, the label stickers are not acceptable. These kind of products need to have their bilingual label at the point of their manufacture and then directly in, import into China. These products are special. Okay, and then um, for other food products, mostly, yes, you could use a label sticker. Um, I gave an example here. This is uh, apple juice, and then um, it has its original label and have, uh, having its label sticker on the top of its original um, English label. And um, however, when you are using a label sticker and you are having your original label on your product, you need to make sure that the original label should not have any information that is not compliant to the laws, to the regulations or the standards in China. For example, um, best is not um, com is not able to be used in China. For example, um, best beverage in uh, America um, or the top one beverage, this kind of um, sayings, this kind of claims is not compliant in China. So for this kind of product, you need to make sure that your original label does not have this kind of information. And the second question is, is, how should I label my ingredient list if regulatory requirements are different? Um, actually, um, the government in China have announced their um, official suggestion about this. Um, their suggestions is all the information required in the ingredient list in original label should also be presented in the ingredient list in Chinese label. For example, in China, if you have um, some flavorings, you are able to not list the details of this, the names of the flavoring, you could just say food flavorings. But if in your country, it is required to um, label your detail, the names of your flavorings on your ingredient list. Then you will also need to list it in your Chinese label. And um, it is acceptable if the ingredient list in Chinese label is having more information because of the regulatory difference. The third question is, how should I do my date markings if my products are labeled in best before format? As we mentioned before, production date must not be relabeled, must not be reprinted, um, and must not be um, tempered. However, if the original label is having best before date and um, the companies are allowed to print a date of manufacture and shelf life on its Chinese label. This is not considered as reprinted or relabeled. Fourth question is how to declare the flavorings, um, artificial flavorings, natural flavorings. Um, on your finished goods. Uh, for this question, the, label the standard name of the flavor on the ingredient list, or it can also be labeled just using food flavoring. Um, the standard GB2760 is having the st standard names of the flavor 
And um, in um, the table one, there is also a declaration manner for the flavoring that you could um, re refer to. Then um, question five, if my Chinese label covers some information on original label that is non-compliant in China, is that acceptable? Um, for example, if you have a beverage here, just like uh, this one on the right, and um, on your bottle, you have some advertisements or claims that are not compliant in China, and you are using a label sticker to cover it, and then import. import. Um, for this way, it is not actually recommended because um, according to our experience, some of the professional extortioner have found um, this and will sometimes tear down your label sticker and complain and, or prosecute um, to you um, about your non-compliant labelings. Um, and um, what we suggest is there is actually a kind of um, label sticker on the market, which um, if you tear down this label sticker, it will destroy the label under it. Um, we will recommend um, our, our clients to use this kind of um, label sticker to cover its um, non-compliant part in this original label. But um, if you want to lower down your risk, the best is to not having these non-compliant things on your original label. The sixth question is, if I'm having a bilingual label, do I need to translate all the information on label into Chinese? Um, for this question, it is having two situations. So um, one is that you use a label sticker and the other is you are using a totally bilingual label. And um, if you are using a label sticker, usually it, it is um, allowed, it is um, accepted that you only have the compulsory information on your label sticker and you don't need to translate all the information on your original label. However, if you're using bilingual label like the picture on the bottom, you have one line of um, the foreign language and one line of Chinese. This kind of product, um, it is recommended to translate all of the information um, because we have some clients um, that um, is willing to do this, but um, find their cut their local customs um, think that bilingual labels should have all their foreign languages translated into Chinese. So um, there are two situations um, for label stickers. You could just translate the compulsory information and for bilingual labels, you are suggested to translate all the information. Okay, so this is all I want to share today. Um, thank you for all for listening to my presentation. And if you have questions, um, you have more that want to communicate with us, discuss with us, you could contact um, this email for further communication. And um, as food made, we have um, lots of food related services here. If you are interested, um, feel free to contact us. Okay, so um, let's see whether we have any question here.
May I know where can I get the English version of GB standards? Um, actually, the English version of GB standards, I think only a few of um, standards have English version for free. Um, if you want to have some of the um, specific English version of GB standards, you could um, contact with um, the email address that, that I have posted here. And um, we will check whether we have this kind of English version. Okay, so um, it's the end of my presentation today. Thank you for listening. You could, um, if you have more questions, you could um, see the chat box. You could um, send your questions to our email.